Hello, this is the second video for implementing the chatting app. Uh, specifically, I will show you how to communicate between two peers using ESPNOW, which is a wireless communication protocol. If you need a tutorial on implementing UI using LVGL, please watch the first video. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, you need two ESP32. Both ESP32 have exactly the same MCU and display IRI9488. Uh, the ESP32 on the left is primary peer acting as the master and the secondary peer playing the role of a slave on the right. Uh, if possible, I will use the terms of primary and secondary instead of master and slave. Uh, thanks for your understanding. Uh, when it's turned on, it's ready and connected very quickly and it's connected to the serverless network without any problems. So they are sending and receiving messages to each other. Uh, this is a big advantage of ESP now. You can simply configure the wireless network without a server. But this is not enough for the commercial level. I think it still needs to be more developed. For example, if a connected device becomes no longer able to communicate, there is no way the other side recognizes it. Uh, nevertheless, it's still a very useful way to communicate, uh, enabling you to create a variety of applications. Uh, let me explain why looking at the code. Uh, first of all, this code contains both primary peer and secondary peer. The reason for this is there are many common parts, so rather than making two separate codes, a specific code can be executed in one code according to the role. Uh, the enumerated type was declared to distinguish the role. Uh, here, you can select primary or secondary depending on your device. Uh, I have one type which is the ESP now peer info type that can hold information for the other peer. The variables below are used to send and check ping. I will explain it again later. Um, go to setup. Here we create an ESP now task. This task is operated separately from the GUI task. Uh, let's go to ESP now task. Uh, depending on the rule, uh, you will see the code that work differently. Uh, in the case of primary, it's the master and will be have actively. Uh, therefore, Wi-Fi station is set. A device that behave like a wireless client may be called a station. Uh, when this ESP32 is under station mode, it means the device is connected to wireless router. Otherwise, the AP mode is shown for access point mode. Uh, it's one of the most common modes for all wireless routers. Uh, when ESP32 is under AP mode, it means this device acts as a wireless router with SSID. So your smartphone will be able to connect to this device when it's under AP mode. One thing, station mode is also required for bidirectional communication in ESP now. Therefore, it's also set to AP station combo mode in secondary mode. Uh, set up the AP. Uh, set a password to prevent unnecessary communication interference. It also sets the name of the AP so that it can be used by the primary peer to find this AP. If you set it like this, uh, the AP's name will be MAC address which start with the keyword peer. Uh, initialize ESP now after Wi-Fi setup. Restart the device if there is a problem. If there is no problem, update the status label with ESP now ready. Uh, it's time to register the most important receiver callback function in message communication. Regardless of primary or secondary, if you look at the bottom of the function, it converts the incoming byte data into a string. If the length of the string is greater than zero after removing white space, updating the table with this string. Uh, before I explain the top part, let's think about the timing of the peer connection. For primary peer, search the surrounding network directory and find and connect the AP with the specific keyword peer. At this time, this primary peer can know the connection was made after registering the other peer without any issues. Uh, the problem is the secondary peer side. Uh, there is no way to tell if it's connected. So the way I did it was, uh, after the primary peer connected properly, send a hello message to the secondary peer. Then the secondary peer can recognize that the receiver callback function is invoked and saying connected. When the other peer is connected from the primary or secondary peer, it's storing the other peer information in the peer, which is a global variable. 
Uh, this tells you if it's currently the other peer connected or not. Let's look at the function to send the message. It's pretty simple. Converting the string to byte and send the message to the other peer via ESP now send. If the message is normally sent, uh, return zero. So use the exclamation mark to return true, uh, making it the opposite. Let's talk about ping. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there is no way to know if a connected peer suddenly disconnects. If you send a message even after the connection is lost, it appears it has been sent normally, and the send callback function is also not helpful. This is the reason why I didn't use the send callback function in this project. However, it's important to know the other peer is connected properly in the chatting app. So the way I used this project is to periodically send the dummy data to the connected peer and check it. Uh, there are interval settings for ping every second. We have already created a variable to store the time of the last packet, which is received from the other peer every three seconds. Um, the way to send a ping is simply to send the dummy data of uh, one length. Uh, it's blank string, so if you trim the message, it becomes nothing. Uh, if you look at the function check last packet, it's checking the last time of the data received from the other peer. Uh, it's updating peer last packet time whenever you receive the message from the receive callback function. Um, if no packets are received within 3 seconds, consider the other peer is broken and then the peer is deleted. Uh, primary operates scanning the peer again and secondary waits until another peer has access. Uh, this allows you to build a system that lets you know the status of the other peer. Um, this project is a chatting app that includes one-to-one -one, two-way communication. If I have a chance, I'd like to make an advanced chatting app that supports one-to-end communication and has a better UI. Um, you can download the source code of this project through the GitHub link below. If you have any questions, please comment on this video. Mm, thanks for watching. See you in the next project.